And I want to also talk about uh, inflammation. Uh, what we found in the diabetes is, is that when people came in, their all meat ears were highly inflamed. Uh, unbelievably. Uh, up, uh, up to 16 in, in normals are like, depending on the test, you know, one or th to three. And, and, and three to four weeks, we brought it down 10 points, which is very, very dramatic. So we know that we, a live food thing treats inflammation in a very good way. So on that, that brings me to Dr. Spindler's work. And another reason why live food is so important is he fed animals, uh, little rats, 40% less, put the gene chips in, uh, and he, he, he 11,000 gene chips. And what he found was that if you eat 40% less, you get a 400% increase in the anti-aging genes, the anti-inflammation genes, the antioxidant genes, and also the anti-cancer genes. And that's a very, very significant finding. What's that have to do with what we're talking about? Well, contrary to what one of the uh, kind of mediators is saying, oh, you can cook meat and it doesn't make any difference, the fact is when you cook protein, all protein, according to the Max Planck Institute, you lose 50% of the protein. It's coagulated. You lose 60 to 70% of vitamins and minerals and up to 95% of the phytonutrients. Wow. Translate that. That means if you're doing a live food diet, it means you're not cooking. What's happening is you're automatically in a, a, what they would call calorie restriction, but there's no restriction. You can eat half as much food. You naturally lose weight. You're getting all the nutrients you do, and you're on the optimal longevity diet, which is basically uh, uh, the less you eat, the longer you live. So that's another thing to keep in mind. I want to also say along with this, uh, thing is something that I know David Wolf has pointed out. I've been studying herbs since 1973. That's when I took my first herb course. A guy named Rob Menzies. I think he's a walking herb. Uh, <laughs> literally, he looked like an herb. And, um, and I've really studied uh, Ayurvedic and the Taoist uh, herbs, as well as American herbs. <clears throat> and uh, I would definitely say that because of the insufficiency in our environment and our soils, that um, going with the s super uh, herbs and also the super foods is a very, very wise way to cope with the general insufficiency in the, the plant and animal world. So that's definitely part of my diet. And actually, it's so much part that we're now teaching it in the master's program. We used to kind of mention it. David used to come and talk about it, it was good, but now we're actually offering it 12 hour course from a, 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 a master Taoist herbalist. Wow. So I'm kind of excited that we're doing that and, uh, because we think it's so important and so much part of our training in the live food. Now, the other thing that doesn't get talked, did not get talked about in this great debate is energies in a different way. So if you look at the Taoists, and I released my little thing on the, uh, the whole idea of uh, 22 top kind of nutrients and herbs, is that we have jing, jing, pre and postnatal jing, we have uh, qi, and we have xin. In other words, foods have energies. And the, the meat eating food has energy of death and that affects you. You get other energies from it too. You can activate it too and, and so forth. That, that just happened. It, may, it can increase your dopamine and so forth in, in some levels. But foods have energy. If we aren't eating and include the energy, it's pretty important. Now, 